sure whether I want to say this is like a 3.5 star, a 3.75 star, just a full-blown four-star read. You see, I enjoyed The Miniaturist. I was invested in its characters, I eagerly followed their journey and uncovered their secrets, and I even got antsy as I neared its end because, well, I wanted to know how it was going to end. Hell, I even re-listened to the first chapter and marveled at how great it was in context of having read the entire novel. But at the same time, this book was pretty predictable. The Miniaturist is a historical fiction novel and with a few elements of magical realism that admittedly don't necessarily go anywhere. And don't mistake me, I'm not really saying that as a criticism. I've always found magical realism as something that's fluid and the fact that the magical realism elements of the miniaturist add to more the atmosphere of the story than the actual plot, I was really okay with that. I actually liked that the miniaturist herself is never really fully explained and that the way she interacts with the protagonist and the other characters is mysterious, seemingly magical, and ultimately just unsettling. But that plot... It's just so easy to figure out where it's going. And while I don't think the miniaturist really depends upon the twists, yeah, those demanded air quotes, that crop up within the narrative, it certainly just draw them out as if they were things that are meant to surprise us. And this is something I found incredibly frustrating as I feel the narrative really telegraphed these twists well enough that they were super easy to discern. All one had to do was basically be paying just enough attention while they read. And I wasn't even like physically reading, I was listening to this novel, which, you know, in theory probably should have made it more difficult for me to pick up on these little threads and on what was likely happening. I mean, Johannes being gay? Yeah, I saw that coming from a mile away. Although, to be fair, I'd put up at least two scenarios for why Johannes uh, didn't seem fully, uh, let's say, comfortable being physically intimate with his wife in any way. And my two scenarios were that he was either gay or asexual, the latter of which would have brought me great joy. But I figured this is, you know, a historical novel set in the 1680s. They at least acknowledged homosexuality was a thing. Even it was in like the worst way imaginable, which was that it was considered unnatural and illegal and they would kill you if you were gay. So, you know, in my head, that kind of took asexuality off the table. But how about Marin being pregnant and being pregnant with Otto's child? Oh yeah, called both those. Though I'll admit it took me a little longer to figure out the identity of the father, but I still figured it out long before our protagonist, which is to say long before the narrative acknowledged it. If there were any other smaller twists, I can't even think of them because again, I didn't consider them particularly shocking or surprising at all. But what did surprise me was how I wasn't bothered by the fact that the plot was easily telegraphing its direction and that I could figure it out long before it, you know, explicitly stated these things. I think it's because I was wrapped up in the atmosphere of, you know, 1680s Amsterdam and the secrets that were in the Brandt household. Yeah, they were secrets that were easy to, like, figure out, but the relationships between the characters were all intriguing as a result of these secrets. I was sucked into watching these characters, these wonderfully flawed human beings, who would hurt and help and aid and injure each other on so many emotional and or even physical levels, whether or not they always meant to, because, that is to say, you know, I was watching a family in all of its dysfunctionalities, which I'm pretty sure isn't a word, but I'm making it a word. And that was the best part of the story, and the fact that it was the bulk of the story is why I enjoyed it so much. And it comes down to the fact that I really cared about these characters. They were such a joy to follow, even when I maybe, you know, disagreed with them or when I wanted to like wring their necks for decisions they were making. And I don't even think I really realized how much I liked all the characters in the Brandt household until the novel was nearly over. It was nearly over and I suddenly really cared about what was happening. And I suddenly was like really caring because they were like hurt and they were in tough situations and all of a sudden I had these like weird little mini spasms in my chest, like pangs of pity and sympathy. I was experiencing genuine human emotion. It was troubling. As I was really say, despite a plot, it was incredibly easy to figure out and you know, which sometimes evidently made me antsy while just waiting for the protagonist to discover it and for the book to just explicitly state what it was hiding. I still really liked this book. I didn't love it, but I definitely liked it, like really liked it so much so that I look forward to reading more from Jesse Burton. And I will also say, 
you totally have to go back and re-listen to or reread the first chapter when you finish because it should just be mandatory reading. It's so brilliant in context of everything you've just read. It just makes it all the better. Thanks for watching me ramble today. If you'd like to see more from me, go ahead and click that button with my face on it. It'll take you to my channel where I ramble about a whole lot of different things. Got some thoughts of your own? Go ahead and leave them down in the comments. And make sure that if you want to see more ramblings from me, you click that little subscribe button. That's it for me today, you guys. So until next time, cheers.